All right, I do not often wait for people to show. I don't often wait for people to show up, but I am going to um, just wait a minute or two to get started. I look like it's freaking winter out because it's freaking cold. I'm gonna wait a minute just because there is not gonna be a replay of this. So. <clears throat> Hey, <laughs> for some, I'm just waiting a minute or so because this is a lesson that I'm not doing a replay of. So just hang tight. I'm probably going to get started here in about 10 seconds. Um, what we're going to be talking today, talking about today is why you may feel empty and what you can do about it. And the reason why I picked that topic is because a lot of my private clients are struggling with this in some way or form. And so I wanted to be um, able to come and share this lesson with you and then I'll be sharing with this them this with them later on so I'm gonna go ahead and get started so why you feel empty inside and what you can do about it you guys know it's always I always have notes um, before I get started I just have two announcements quickly for those of you that feel like when you're listening to this message or like the one we did last week about life purpose and feeling like even though you keep trying to get ahead, um, maybe you're not making headway or not maybe or maybe you're not getting the results that you want. I just wanted to let you know that I do have slots open for private coaching. So if you've never tried working with a coach, coaches have experience and training that can help you obtain your results faster and more efficiently so you're not wasting a lot of time one of the resources that you can never get back. So if that's something you're interested in, I do have slots open for that. And then there are two classes coming up. This upcoming Sunday, we have a natal chart class. It's perfect for beginners. If you've ever wanted to learn how to look at your astrological chart and see the things that I'm talking about, like your life purpose, your dream career, um, your relationships, why you are the way you are, your challenges, obstacles, strengths, all of that stuff, it is there in your natal chart. <laughs> it's almost like, you know how you have that owner's manual for your car? You have one for your life if you would learn to tap into your natal chart. So if you wanna learn how to read that, you could be a beginner at this. You don't have to know anything about astrology in order to attend class. That is this Sunday. On September 20th, though, I will be teaching you about intuition, what it is, why it's important, how to tap into it, how to distinguish your intuition from fear and anxiety, how to trust it, how to tap into it and make it stronger, all of the things related to intuition. So if that is something that you're interested in, then next week, the 20th, we have a class on Sunday around developing your intuition. So those are two announcements. We're gonna get into the message for tonight. And this lesson that I'm gonna be talking about today kind of ties into the lesson that I talked about last week when we talked about some of the things that prohibit people from tapping into their life purpose or maybe some things that you need to know in order to find your life purpose because maybe you're struggling about a sense of purpose and truly what life purpose really means. It's not connected to these modern human constructs that we've made up over the last few generations. Your life purpose is something deeper and more meaningful. But at the same time, I'm noticing that even as people are starting to move in the right direction, they still feel this emptiness inside. And so I felt like I had to do a part two to almost discuss that empty feeling that you may feel so that I can give you some tips and tricks at the end of our discussion on how you can transcend some of those feelings. So one of the number one things that I find, and this is why it ties into what we talked about last week. One of the number one things that I find with people when they feel like there's this empty feeling inside is because there is a lack of vision for their life um, and that usually is not to say that you don't think that you know what you want out of life but what it tends to be is you basing your life on conditioning and conditioning means that 
maybe your mother or your father or your family or society told you that you had to be a certain way or do things a certain way. Maybe the neighborhood that you grew up in, your friends, any of those things that have an impact and tell you what you should do without you questioning if it's right for you and you just going along with status quo is you having a lack of vision. We also talked about a lack of vision being, maybe is you drift. There are a lot of people in life that feel like if they don't have a purpose or they go with the flow or you know i just kind of go with life and whatever comes my way i just kind of deal with it so you kind of drift through life which is also tied to a lack of vision and when you don't purposely create what it is that you want in your life you can feel empty inside because we all have a bigger purpose in this life and that bigger purpose in this life is to shine our light well find our light in ourselves and then take that light and bring it out into humanity and society as a whole to elevate consciousness by sharing our little unique piece of that and when you decide that you're not going to intentionally tap into your power your unique power that you were put onto this earth to express then you lack one of the number one things that you're supposed to do in this lifetime and that's co-create that's create and so that can leave you feeling very empty you may also just have some limiting beliefs um, maybe you feel like you will never find anybody else or this is the best that it gets or especially what I often find is that people will compare their relationship, their finances, all of those things, their career to their friend circle. And they think, okay, maybe I'm doing better than my friends, or maybe I'm doing equal than my friends, or maybe I'm just doing just a little bit less than my friends. And they think that that is normal. But usually even your circle of friends, your close friends shows um, how far and how wide you are expansive in your life. So your friends usually are not going to be that much more elevated than you are. So comparing yourselves to them when 99% of people make decisions based off conditioning and limiting beliefs means that you are also doing the same thing. So you have to even step away from things that put limits on what you can achieve in certain areas of your life. And if you are limiting yourself based on what you think you can have, what you should have, what's possible, and not really being an open book to know that you can merge up with the power of God and co-create whatever it is that you want, then you are probably going to feel a little bit empty inside because you're not living up to your true potential of what you know in your heart is maybe meant for your life. You know that whatever you're doing right now is not all that there is to your life. You're settling. Um, and then there's standards. Maybe you have a lack of vision. You feel empty inside because you just don't have standards and standards and boundaries. We can call them what they are, but either you maybe have too low of standards. You maybe have too high of standards, like not too high of standards where you don't set the bar high, but maybe you have unachievable, unrealistic expectations, et cetera, such as perfectionism. And so you may need to work with that. And so you're either going to feel empty inside because you're never going to achieve the attainable, which is perfect. None of us are perfect. Or you could feel empty inside because you literally let situations and people and things deplete you of your energy instead of having a lack of healthy boundaries in your life. Um, another thing, and this is something that a lot of people don't want to hear, but this is probably the number one thing that people that experience emptiness are what that feeling is tied to. And it's tied to your subjective happiness. Um, not a lot of people in life have subjective happiness. What does that mean? That means that as long as I'm a wife or a mother or this person loves me or I have this much money or I have my job or any little thing that we tie to our identity, as long as that thing is intact, then we're happy. But if you're 
um, job is ripped away from you, if your partner disappoints you or you want to leave your partner, they want to leave you or you lose money or your kids make you mad, any of those different things, then you're no longer happy. I'm not saying that that's not human though. A lot of times we do it, right? If we get divorced, we feel unhappy. If we lose our money, we, we feel unhappy. But at the same time, you have to know, especially if on the larger scale of things or when you look at the trends in your life, if you don't allow the changes that felt challenging in your life to mold you or change you for the better, and you're not a type of person that has an expansive mindset that can take a challenge and move forward to greater opportunities or learn for, from it or grow from it or transmute it, change it, then you're going to find that your happiness and that empty feeling will always come up whenever you've attached your happiness to something external. The reason why, um, whether you have noticed it or not, is that external things are usually out of your control. You can think that you, um, you know, you made a contract with your spouse for them to be married to you forever, or that your kid is going to be loyal to you because of the way that you raised them or your job, you've been there for 30 years and they're going to have your back. They can seem like they are stable, but they're all an illusion because those are things that you don't control. That means that they get to decide what they want, right? Your kids can decide what they want at some point, your spouse, your partner, your job. And so your life can fluctuate because those are things that are guaranteed to change in life, guaranteed to move up and down in life, guaranteed to fluctuate in life. However, the one thing that you can, can control is you. And this goes back to your vision for your life and the person that you want to be, your vision, your values, your core beliefs, who you are, how you show up along with your spiritual anchor. Those are the two things that you get to have control over. And so the stronger that you can be in your conviction, in your faith, in who you are, living your life authentically with a vision and a purpose and taking action every day in that direction, I promise you, you're not going to feel that sense of emptiness that follows you and follows you and follows you and it becomes a constant and then it becomes low-grade melancholy and disappointment and resentment and eventually depression however and the reason why i say spirituality also is because to be a spiritual person doesn't mean that you are religious it doesn't mean that you burn all the sage and do the crystals and read tarot cards what spirituality means is that you believe that there is a power at play that is much higher than the power that you show up with on the day to day. And if you believe in that and you have a vision for that, that type of power, and you know that there's a bigger overarching purpose for your life other than what you experience in that tiny little moment of your 80 year life, then you will start to live a life that is more centered and more grounded and more on your middle path. And so these things that I'm talking about that are external do not tend to throw you off your path as easily because you are anchored to something that is of importance and that is not of the everyday things that we experience. And so you then don't tend to feel empty when you are going through the everyday ups and downs of life. Those things are inevitable. Um, what else do I have here? So do, if you think that the external things are going to fulfill you, then you're going to have an issue with emptiness when those things are taken away. Another thing that I want to bring to your attention about why you could feel empty is because, all right, let's say you have done some of the exercises that I've shared with you in order for you to align with what you think is your purpose for right now what you do need to do after that is take an intense audit of your life i teach my clients two specific ways that they can audit every single area of their life to make sure they have that vision but then every day just because you have a vision are you living it 
Do your actions, your attitudes and behaviors funnel into it? Are you learning new skills to help you move in that direction? Do you feel it deep in your soul that that's the appropriate direction for you to move in? Are you using your mind creatively as a tool to help you create and um, imagine and bring toward the things that you need in order to move toward your vision? Because if you have a vision, if you have a purpose, you've nailed a purpose that you want for right now, but you're not living it and you don't have your heart and your mind moving in the same direction toward it. What you're going to find is that you are living life out of flow. So nothing that you do is going to feel like it's going to um, maybe complete you or make you feel whole or make you feel like you're doing purposeful action. Um, so let's just say I have this vision that I want to help women that have been abused, that have been domestic through domestic abuse, right? That's my vision. But if what I have spent a lot of my time on is going to work, playing video games, watching TV, um, eating, um, talking with my friends on social media, then you're going to feel empty because you've identified that you have a purpose much bigger than what you spend your time on, yet you're not doing it. And I want to paint the picture of the opposite so that you can understand what it truly feels like to work in heart and mind alignment and work in flow and notice how that feeling of emptiness just fades away. So let's just think of a time where um, maybe we were in creative flow or what people call the zone. So you are into something, it really lights you up, it's something that makes you happy, and then you just get lost in time. You don't notice, You just, sometimes you forget to eat. You just are in your zone doing your thing. When you are in that space, when you are in flow, that is when your heart and your mind are coordinated and moving in the same direction. When you are in flow, when you are in your zone, think about this. Are you thinking about all the bad things that ever happened to you? No. Are you thinking about the fact that you feel empty because you don't have a boyfriend or the career that you want or a husband or whatever? No. You are so connected to that creative and powerful energy that you are living in flow and you forget about it. And that's where that coordination comes in. You can feel that feeling every day. You can feel that feeling consistently, but what it takes is after you get that vision, are you taking purposeful action in all areas of your life in order to funnel into that vision? And if you're not doing that, then you're going to feel empty because you are busy and you are chasing all, you know, chasing all the goals and doing all the things, but they don't mean anything. They're not value added to the purpose that you have chose to adopt for yourself. So you need to work with purpose. You need to have heart and mind coordination. You need to do it as consistently as possible and you need to do it as much as possible, as effectively as possible, as value added as possible in order to dissipate some of those feelings of emptiness. If you don't know what I'm talking about, again, uh, tap into that feeling that you have felt when you've been in flow. You haven't worried about any of these worldly issues when you are in your zone. So how can you get into your zone all the time? And this is how you get into the, your zone, the things that I've spoken to you about today. So solutions, I got some solutions for you. The big solution, and it's a big question to unpack, but if you do not do this, nothing else that you do in your life is going to have meaning. And so you are going to potentially feel empty because you're going to call in stuff that is not aligned with who you are. So number one is you need to know who you are. The first thing that I do when I start working with private clients, they, they don't get to go in and set goals. I talked about this last week. You need to know who you are or who you want to be. And you may not know what you want to be, but you do know you want to be a good person. Maybe you want to be healthy. Maybe you want to be mentally stable. Maybe you want to be physically active. Maybe you want to be loving. You do have some sort of vision for who you are. Be honest about who you are now, but dream a little bit about who you want to be. 
because that's going to be the foundation that's going to set you up to see where some of those feelings of emptiness could be coming in. It could be because you don't know who you are. And if you don't know who you are, if you are disconnected from yourself, you're going to feel empty and nothing outside of you is going to fill that void. If you don't have a relationship and a connection and congruency and wholeness within yourself. The second thing that I notice is, or I want you to ask yourself is, do you have meaningful, intimate relationships in your life? Now, as much as we hear people say, you know, you gotta be whole before you get into a relationship. And I do believe to an extent, any of the trauma and baggage that you have will continue to carry on into your future relationships if you don't get a grasp on it. I do understand that we are human beings having a human experience, but I think that people get this wrong. So I really want you to pay attention. Do you have meaningful, intimate relationships, not surface relationships, not relationships where you're scared to be yourself or you're scared to speak your truth. These are intimate, authentic relationships built on trust, unconditional love, respect, etc. Now, the first person that you're going to want to build this type of relationship with is yourself. Do you trust yourself? Are you honest with yourself? Do you know yourself? Do you love yourself? All of those things. Do you have an intimate knowing of who you are? Know thyself. The second thing that I noticed though, is that you don't necessarily have to have a relationship with a boyfriend or a partner. If you have people that you vibe with on that deep, intimate level. And I find that if people have a whole bunch of surface relationships or, or fake relationships, or maybe not intimate relationships, or they're not a hundred percent authentic and all of the things that I said, then they're going to have a feeling of emptiness when it comes to connecting with other people. But that doesn't mean that other people should be coming to you to try to create these type of relationships and you're going to wait and see what they do and see if you can trust them in order to do that. No, what it means is that you have to be the catalyst to want to cultivate these type of relationships with other people. And once you do, you're going to find that if you have a, a tight circle of friends that is aligned and moving in the same direction as you, that you can trust and be yourself and speak open and intimately about, you're not going to be thinking about being so empty that you want to just compromise your values, your integrity, and all of the things to just have a relationship just because you don't want to be alone. Again, this is not your friends, your girlfriends that you just go out for dinner and brunch with. These are close, intimate people in your life that you're helping each other build and grow and move toward purpose together. It does not have to be a partner. So think about that. And if you're not cultivating those type of relationships, then that is probably uh, a big reason why you may feel empty. Um, and then the third thing that I wanted to talk to you about was forgiveness. A lot of times people feel empty inside because they hold on to the past. When we say this, there's a whole bunch of people that get up in arms about the fact that we're spiritual bypassing and telling you you can't be hurt or that you should just totally forget about the things that have happened to you. And it's not about forgetting the bad things that's happened to you. However, moving forward, what are you going to do about the bad things that have happened to you? Are you holding on to them with resentment, anger, distrust, um, scared to be vulnerable, scared to cultivate intimate relationships, scared to be yourself, um, all of those things. And if you are approaching those type of relationships in that way, then you're not going to be able to make room for something beautiful to come into your life. You're, you should be a lot, what you should be doing is allowing the challenges and tribulations and things that you went through to change you for the better. That is the only thing that you often have control of when you have been through something that is super traumatic or painful or whatever. You have the choice about how you're going to let it change you. And so forgiveness and releasing 
of things that have happened in the past and moving forward, letting them change you positively will empty up that dead weight and that dead space that you're carrying along with you and allow you to have room for better opportunities, growth, love, all of that stuff to come into your life if you are in alignment with that. And then the fourth and last thing that I wanted to give you as a solution for what you can do if you're starting or if you feel empty is strive for a purpose. So number one, you have to kind of know who you are. But after that, you have to strive for a purpose. If you are, um, I think they say even in the Bible, um, if you don't have a vision, the people perish. Like you have to have something that you are working toward that is not a status symbol, that is not something that somebody else told you to work through or something you think you should be working toward. Usually when they are saying that you should have a vision or a goal that is tied to something that is meaningful and of value and of purpose for you, and you should be striving toward that. And when I say striving toward that, I don't mean you think that you want it and you half ass do stuff whenever you feel like it. I mean that you do an audit of your life in your love life. Are you truly acting, believing and behaving in a way that is in alignment with the type of love and relationship you want spiritually, financially, in your job, in your personal relationship with yourself, your fitness, audit your whole life. And if you find that none of that is on point or you have areas that you need to tighten up, then I would say then think about a purpose in each one of those areas for how you want your life to look and start to tighten it up and make sure that as consistently as possible and as effectively as possible, most of the stuff that you do day in and day out should be in alignment with the purpose and vision that you have in those areas in life. Because by doing that, not only are you leveling up, evolving, um, and being, you know, working towards something for your future, you're also inherently tapping into what I talked about with that heart and mind coordination. And when those two things are working together, what are you working in? You're working in flow. So that means that most of your life, most of your waking hours of the day are spent in flow because you are intentionally doing things that lead to a purpose that you've decided for yourself for this moment in time. So that might be a lot to unpack. This replay is not going to be available after tomorrow. So if you need to go back and take notes and rewind and re-listen and then go back to last week where I talked about life purpose stuff, then you need to do so because I am taking this down um, and using it for a different purpose. Again, if you find that you are having trouble connecting with the things that I'm talking about, you don't understand them, even though I'm telling you what you should do, you need help with how to execute those, then you are probably a candidate for private coaching or should consider working with someone that can help you go through these things. I have slots available. The second thing we have coming up this upcoming Sunday is a natal chart class. A natal chart will show you some clues about your life purpose, your relationships, your best careers, your, um, your great work, um, what fills you up, what depletes you. It's all there. <laughs> so if you want to learn how to start using the power of astrology to, you know, answer some of these questions and help you get clarity, guidance, and move forward, then you should come to class. You don't have to know about astrology to come to class. I teach you how to pull your chart. I teach you how to find these key things, and then you just can take it and run with it from there. And then the very last thing, and then I'll let you guys go, is September 20th, I have the Develop Your Intuition class. So let's just say you are just totally lost. You don't even know who you are. You totally lost yourself. And what you want to do also is learn how to cultivate a connection to your inner self. So that means you want to learn how to hear your voice, what it sounds like, what it is, why it benefits you, how to hear it stronger, how to distinguish that voice from fear and anxiety. Um, if you've tried to use what you thought was your intuition before and you feel like it burned you, um, maybe what could be troubleshot or corrected in order for you to truly trust yourself. Those are all the things you're going to learn in the Develop Your Intuition Workshop. 
um, and that one is the 20th. I will leave all of the links to everything once I wrap up this live. Does anybody have any questions before I go? It doesn't look like it, but... All right, so none of this is meant to discourage you. A lot of this stuff is just the way that we were raised. It's the way that we're taught. But, <laughs> that, yes, that's the class. Um, it's just the way that we were taught. However, we have a choice about if we want to let those things stop us from living a full life moving forward. And we absolutely do. And it starts with knowing yourself. It starts with learning how to connect to that life purpose. And it starts with you taking control of the things you can control, which is your spiritual path and your connection to yourself and shaping that no matter who, what, where that, um, you know, try to throw you off your path. And Julie, if you need coaching, you girl, you better come on. No, I'm just kidding. So if you guys want to come to class, again, I'll leave the links. I'll also leave the link for coaching. You can check it out and see if any of it is a good fit for you. And I will be here next week at 7 p.m. to talk to you guys about something else. If you have ideas on what you would like me to teach about, please leave them in the comment box because I'm here to serve you. Otherwise, I just pick trends from my private clients and talk to you guys about them because if all of them are experiencing it, you probably are too. All right, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.